It's Elliot, and welcome back to the channel. So I was watching an interview recently, and it got me thinking about my own history with stage presence, or performance ability, if you will. It was an interview by Rick Beato of Marty Friedman. Rick does a really good job of interviewing a lot of people I like. Um, you know, it was nice to hear the Schofield one. It was cool to hear the Derek Trucks one, especially because Derek doesn't get interviewed a lot. Uh, and I remember Marty from when I was a kid, and I would listen to Cacophony. Um, you know, him and Jason Becker and everything like that. Uh, and I hadn't heard him in a long time. And I was like, oh, yeah, this will be fun. So at some point during the interview, Rick starts talking about how kids these days don't perform like people used to. And everyone just stands there now. And something, something, something about how, you know, people performed before and now they don't. It got me thinking about my history with performing because I am not a natural performer. If you've seen me perform at like a really huge show with like really good sound and the audience was going nuts and everything like that, you might think I was a good performer until you saw me <laughs> playing to, you know, a mostly empty room with terrible sound or something, then I don't look like a good performer. It actually got me thinking of this one specific uh, scenario where it was a gig and the drummer was going to sub out. He couldn't make the gig and he called, you know, sub one, two, three, four, five. They were all busy. Sub six or so said yes. And sub six didn't really play the drums so much. <laughs> and mind you, this is like a three hour gig. So I'm finding out like song three that I'm like, I don't know if this person knows really what they're doing, like on the instrument and if they know the songs. That can be a little worrisome and a little bit like, you know, oh no, is this four songs in to set one and we have three sets? Like I gotta start cueing this person. I gotta, you know, start really, you know, holding down the rhythm and like, I gotta lead the drummer like, you know, something like that. So there's a lot going on in my head of like, what can I do? What can the keyboard player do? What can the bassist do? How can we all kind of work with this? So I wasn't smiling a lot that gig. And at the end of it, a lady comes up to me and she goes, so what music do you actually like to play? Because it's clearly not this. <laughs> and I was like, no, it was just a very stressful night, something, something. And, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Um, and she just kind of kept on me. It was a little weird. And like it went past the point of being like, hey, rough night, you know, something that kind of says what she said, but in a nicer way. It went past that point for 20 minutes at least. A um, little weird. Cut to one week later, I'm playing with the exact same band, but with the original lineup, no substitutes and an extra player uh, to add extra instrumentation. And the crowd's going crazy, it's a big crowd, the sound is wonderful, everything about it's going well. I'm having a blast. The same lady comes up to me after set one and goes, that was amazing, you guys are amazing, and just puts $10 in my shirt pocket. I don't know if she even remembered who I was, maybe because she gave me the money, I don't know, but. I remembered who she was, so I was like, I gotta go to the bathroom, excuse me one second. That one lady was simultaneously like the worst review I've ever gotten and the best review I've ever gotten. But back to Rick's comment that the young people these days just don't perform, I guess why it rubbed me the wrong way is because I idolize a lot of people from his generation who perform like I do. You know, Rick will go on about the brilliance of Joe Pass, and Joe Pass during a performance, he might do this and look surprised when he's playing something, but he's not running around the stage. He interviewed Eric Johnson, who also isn't just like running around having like a wild party time. He's very concentrated at what he's doing. He interviewed Derek Trucks, arguably the most stoic blues guitar player of our time. And performance never came up. So honestly, what do we expect when we go to a show? There are some shows where I would agree with Rick. I'd be like, this is like party music. Why aren't people partying? And I'll There'd be plenty of times I would go the opposite and being like, hey, this is an intimate venue or this is an intimate moment. Why are people partying? What I think I look for the most in a performance of any kind, honestly, uh, is just something genuine. Is this person super shy, but they like really want to get on stage and they love their music and they want to share it with the world? Okay. You know, if I like their music, great. Uh, is this person super extroverted and like wants to have a wild time and is playing wild music or something like that? Okay, great. As long as it's coming from somewhere honest, I suppose, uh, that's really all I care about. To be fair, when I go see a show, I do expect some amount of professionalism, which I would think is more like, is this person having a terrible day and so they might not be like running around or smiling? Okay, are they playing their instrument well and like, you know, still serving the song with their music? Okay, 
you know, whatever. Are they really feeling it that day and they kind of want to push it a little bit? Great. Sounds good. If I was lucky enough to have been able to see Stevie Ray Vaughan, uh, would I be like blown over by the performance and like musically and physically like is making the faces. He's, you know, hacking away at his guitar. Yeah, it would have been all great. Have I seen Derek Trucks a bunch live? Uh, and has he performed basically the same every time? And have I loved it every time? Yeah, I've definitely experimented with a lot of ways of performing over the years. Like I've worn ridiculous outfits. I've worn just whatever I was wearing that day. I've run across the stage and like gotten right up in people's faces. I've stayed in the shadows. I've just tried a lot. And that I at least I, you know, is the kind of mindset I would appreciate from someone else as well. I want to see them experiment. I want to see them just do something and just commit to whatever that is. I'm just there to see whatever that is that day, <laughs> honestly. Like I saw Jason Isbell not too long ago and he basically stood there. <laughs> And was it everything I wanted? Yeah, it's Jason Isbell. I love the music. I saw Hiromi Uhara not too long ago either. And was she just losing her mind at the piano like she always does? Yeah. Uh, okay, great. Both were great shows. Obviously, the comment from that interview touched a nerve with me. But it's one that got me thinking because everyone is different. And the mediums of which people are performing on are changing all the time. When surfing around the internet a lot, it's really easy to come across like just like half an opinion, like very surface level, just like, like a throwaway line, but the opinion has more weight than that, kind of, you know, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but basically, a friend of mine told me a quote recently, and I'm going to do something I've never done on this channel before, which is read from my phone. I'm going to end up keeping this quote in mind when I hear the, you know, kids these days arguments. The children now love luxury. They have bad manners, contempt for authority, they show disrespect for elders, and love chatter in place of exercise. Children are now tyrants, not the servants of their households. They no longer rise when elders enter the room. They contradict their parents, chatter before company, gobble up dainties at the table, cross their legs, and tyrannize their teachers. Who was that? Socrates. Despite the kids in those days, somehow we're here. So as you come across the opinion of everything's worse now because of kids these days, just, you know, don't forget that Everyone's thought that forever, and everyone will probably continue to think that. And it's not as nuanced as you deserve.